Hi everyone, welcome to Hedgehog Hollow. So today I have another follow-up review for you. So a while back I reviewed the Picket Fence brushes and you can check out that review in that top right hand corner. But today I have grabbed a load of the different Amazon options. So lots of you said to me, yeah, I love these Picket Fence Studio brushes, but you can get them on Amazon. Are they the same as makeup brushes? You know, all of those good questions. So I wanted to do a follow-up and talk through some of those questions that you had in the descriptions. Now these are the Picket Fence Life Changing Brushes. This is the full set here um, and the ones that I used in my previous video. So they look like this, um, they're silicone based and you can see here they kind of have, you know, this kind of flick through brush on here. And you get them in tons of different sizes. So this is the Picket Fence option. And then I went scouting around on Amazon. There are tons of different options and I will link the ones that I purchased in the description below for you. And I'll do them in the order that they are in the video just to make them easy. So this will be the order that I'm about to show them to you now. Um, and I did lots of research on different ones that were available and what I kind of felt were the best options. And they're all around the same price point and they are a lot less than the picket fence options. So these are one options. They're called Emochi or something along those lines. So they have like a metallic piece on here. And if I grab one of the picket fence ones, you'll see they're very, very similar. I mean, they even, you know, look like the same kind of handle. Again, they have the same feel to them. And if you look at them from the side, you know, they have a very similar tinting as well on the brush. And we are going to do blending with each of these as well. So you can see again, I have a nice selection of different sizes. I have the thin, I have the rounds, I have some bigger ones, smaller ones, all of those kinds of things. So they're the first ones we're going to be looking into. I also grabbed this five piece set that comes in a box. So this one here is a slightly more expensive option, I think it was, but these have a base here so you can actually stand them up on your work surface, which is one thing I really liked about them so that you didn't have to lay them down. Again, the same kind of shading. You only get five in this pack, um, but I did just like that option that you could stand them up. So we're gonna also have a look at those. I'll just leave them out on top of their box for now. Then we're going to look at these Bezox or Bezox and I did slit the box already and the reason I picked these ones out so if I take here these were different because you can see they're like just silicone so I was really intrigued how they behave with inks I have no idea we're going to try them out they may be great they may not be but I thought we could try them and see what they were like so they're not a brush they are like silicone but we use silicone daubers and things like that so I thought they might just give us a different effect. The other thing is with this one, it comes with this little stand that I've already assembled. So you can take your brushes and if I was using it a lot, I would glue this in place. Oh, maybe it slots in this way. Let's try it this way like this. It's not the most stable thing. I would take a little bit of hot glue um, because it only fits one way like this. And then you put this on top this and then you put your brushes in and it stands up as I say some hot glue I think would be the easiest way to kind of keep it all in place because it's very wish wobbly but I do like the fact that they give you um, a stand with it so it's just a nice little extra and I've got some other storage options to show you but we'll collapse that down for a second so that's another option we're going to explore then we have these Use Spicy ones. I think this is one of the bigger sets that I ended up getting. So in here you can see you've got a whole box with loads of different sizes. I like the fact it's a box so we can store it really nice and easily. Again, if we take one out and we look at it from the side, they're really, really similar to our picket fence options. You know, this exactly the same grading on there um, and exactly the same handle. So I expect they will behave exactly the same way. And then these ones were really fun. I just bought these because, hey, they look super cool. Who wouldn't want to craft with these ones with the kind of pointy handle? So we had those. And then finally, I grabbed this one, which comes with a stand. And this was a stand I bought separately 
So this one is a stand here that you can stand your makeup brushes in. I mean, the picket fences stand in here too. And again, I like the idea of having a stand. I'll link the separate stands. If you already have brushes, you can buy that separately. But this set comes with the stand. It's in black. It has like an acrylic piece over. You just peel that off, you build it. It comes with the screws. But this set comes with the stand already in it as well. So that's a nice bonus. So that will be linked in the description for you as well. So how do these brushes work? Maybe you saw my review before, maybe you didn't. So grab yourself a piece of cardstock. Let's grab ourselves some Thermaweb purple tape too, and we'll stick it down. And I'm just gonna grab out this martini stencil. This is a picket fence. It's called martini glass. And I'm just gonna stick it over the top for now. I don't have any pixie spray down here, so. And we're just gonna start out with the emojis. And I grabbed some different inks. So lots of you said, well, what's the difference? You know, how does it blend with different inks? So we'll work through different inks as we're going with these different brushes. So we're gonna start off with Distressed Ink in Wilted Violet. And I'm just gonna hold this down and I'm gonna go over the top. So you can see there, I just get a really nice blend and I can build it up to be strong. And if I go down, you can see how nicely that fades out. So I've got a really strong color at the top, but if I want to fade out my martini glasses, it's really easy, which is something I like about using these life-changing brushes. And I'm working on the Tonic Ultra Smooth White Cardstock, which is a really nice cardstock for blending too. And then when I go to lift up, that's how my piece looks. Again, really nice effect. I like the fact I can get that nice halo effect from it. And I just find it really nice and controllable with these brushes. So you can see there how that looks. So we'll leave that, um, I'll pop, actually I will leave this out. So that's my emoji and I'm gonna leave that piece on the end there. Okay, so let's now go, I think we'll use this one next. So we're gonna use these ones that have the piece on the end. And I'm gonna take this Honeybee Mandala stencil. So this is a really detailed stencil. It actually has a piece in the middle that you can remove or not. Again, I'm gonna tape down my paper. I'm gonna take my stencil and you can see it's a really detailed stencil. And a bit of extra tape. And I like this Thermoweb purple tape. If I am gonna tape down a stencil rather than use my pixie spray. I like this tape because it fits in a Scotch tape dispenser. So it just makes it really nice and easy to use. And I'm gonna start off just with the Wilted Violet again, just to show you a comparison that these are much of a muchness to use. And then we'll start working with other inks so that you can see how they all work with other inks too. So I'm gonna start again just with that same wilted violet. Again, you can get that really nice halo effect and I can get that to come into the middle too. Did you see how easy and smooth that is? There's no harsh lines. It's just really easy. Again, I'm just blending gently to get my nice halo. And I don't have to blend off to the side first, none of those things. And I'm not a great ink blender. My ink blending skills are not tip top in general. So now when I lift this off, and apart from my tape marks, isn't that great? And I've got such a clear crisp image and such beautiful halo effects. So you can see, now this isn't gonna fit in there because they have their stand. So I'm just gonna stand it at number two and we'll put this at number two. But again, I love the effect that we get. So let's move on to some different types of ink that we can work with. We'll go to the third box that's on the bottom there. So these are those Bezox ones. These are the silicone ones. Now I said to you, I'm really intrigued how these are going to behave. So if you've ever seen me work with the tonic silicone daubers, um, I'm not sure if I've got any in my drawer. Sometimes I do. Just having a quick look. 
So these are the silicone daubers that we often work with. Um, and I kind of thought, well, maybe these might behave in the same way. So we're just gonna give it a go and see because crafting is all about trying out new things. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So again, I'm just gonna stick this down. I also like to stick my cardstock down because it just makes it that little bit easier. Uh, I'm going to go with some Distress Oxide for this one. So I'm going to load it up so it's going on to there. And ooh, it's a weird texture. Hmm, I'm not sure how I feel about this. Hmm, I don't think I like this. So this is how it comes out. It's very kind of painty in effect. Um, it takes a lot of ink. And you can see there, it's a very kind of painty effect. I'm not sure I like that. Um, if I was to take it off to the side, I don't know. It's a weird effect. Maybe I need to try it with some paste and other things, but I definitely don't like it with my ink blending. So it does not behave like a silicone dauber, which if I was to use the other end of this, and I was to grab my stencil back and I did this. You see, I get a much smoother application on this than if I do it with this. So not a fan of using those for my ink blending, but hey, we experimented and I did the experiment so you didn't have to. So there you go. So that's that one. Okay, we're not a fan of that. Let's try something else with our Distress Oxides. Let's go to this really nice box that we have here in this set. So I'm gonna take out this one here and we're going to grab a different stencil. We're gonna go with the Picket Fence Randomness stencil. This is a really cool stencil. And we're gonna do this here. We're gonna grab a piece of tape for our cardstock and some tape for our stencil. And then we're gonna grab Distress Oxides. And of course, Oxides do blend really nice and creamily just because they have that pigment and dye fusion in them. So they're a little bit creamier than your regular Distress Inks. So you can see here just how nicely this blends together. But what I could do is I could blend my regular Distress into my Oxide and have different effects into them if I wanted to. And I could really kind of halo out the edge too. So if we wanted to, we could now grab one of those previous ones we used we could go in with our other wilted violet with our regular distress. And we could do that two-tone purple. And you can see how I could blend these two together. You see how those two colors are blending perfectly. And I did grab some other inks so I can show you how other inks blend with these brushes as well. And we'll move on to those with our other two. And so now I can just slide this away. And you can see there how I've got that really beautiful effect on there of the two blended together. Isn't that cool? So they do blend really nicely and they will allow you to blend different inks and different colors together. So that's another thing that you can experiment with. So that was our third one, fourth one even. And now we're gonna move into those really fun unicorn ones because hey, who doesn't want a unicorn in there? And I grabbed a Tim Holtz stencil for this one. So I grabbed the measured stencil. Again, we're just going to tape down. I'm gonna tape a little bit here and I'm gonna tape on the top here. And I'm gonna try some garden patina. So this is the Makeup Blendable by Wendy Vecchi ink. And I'm just loading up my brush. You don't necessarily always see that you've particularly loaded up your brush, but you can see, look, I've got a lot of ink in here. So 
and it's just really easy. So you don't have to do like you do with foams off to the side. You can just really go straight in with these. So this is really easy. And so when I lift it up, you can see again, I've got a really nice impression with a different type of ink as well. So they work really nicely too. And of course I love the little bit of bling and sparkle in those. And I wanted to show you one other type of ink too. Um, I'm just gonna use this mini piece of the mandala because I'm gonna use a different color in here. And I don't have anything to stick this down with. So we're gonna just experiment a little bit. So we're gonna use this little round one here from our last set. These have like a little bit of a silicone grip handle. So these are a bit different. They feel a little bit more premium. And I'm just going to use a tiny bit of tape up here. So we're just gonna do the bottom of our stencil. So we're gonna use Lawn Fawn Carrot. So this is just a regular dye ink pad. This is not a speciality blending pad or anything like that. And you can still see and getting really nice results. So I can still do strong, I can go out to light. See, nothing special about this pad. This is not a distress ink pad, it's none of those things. I'm just gonna hold this with my nail. Put that back into place. And then I'm gonna move my little bit of tape out bravely. Whoops. This is why you normally have pixie spray. I'm just gonna hope that I got some of that. But again, you can see I've got a really nice blend even with just a regular dye ink pad, not something that's designed to be super special or for blending purposes. And I still have a really, really nice result with that. So I think all of these, apart from that one that had that kind of silicone-y weird texture to it, works really, really nicely. As I say, I'll link everything for you in the video description. They all come in at a really affordable price point as well. I still love my picket fences and I love to support small stamp companies because they give us amazing designs and everything else. But I know lots of you are crafting on a budget and things and we all like to be able to have lots of options in our craft room. I also like these ones that just have this round bottom that can sit like this. And of course it's nice to have storage options too. So. Again, all the links will be in the video description for you. I hope you found this review useful and maybe you've picked up some tips or a new tool for your craft room as well. Thank you so much for joining me here at Hedgehog Hollow. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell for daily videos of tips, tricks, tutorials, or maybe something a little bit different. And hit that join button to be part of the Hedgehog Hollow Perks community. Links will also be in the top right hand corner for that as well. We'd love for you to be a part of our community here at Hedgehog Hollow. And also don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's video. I will see you again tomorrow with another video. And in the meantime, happy crafting and have a fantastic day. See you again soon. Bye.